Frank, about how Rondo, playoff Rondo. The, you don't get Rondo for the regular season, but he, the playoff, he's unbelievable. What, what impressed you overall most about the Lakers? What impressed me most about the Lakers is just how mentally they stayed locked in during this whole process. And I think you got to give a lot of credit to the veteran players, but also LeBron, you know. He's ahead of the stake, and, and, you know, the ship goes as far as he takes them. So for them to be locked in during this climate and, and, and really just going from hotel room, basketball court, meal room, back to the court, it's tough, especially what, you know, in the summertime for NBA players, you know, this is our offseason. This is where we go to Cancun, Cabo, and, and Turks and Caicos. But, you know, for these guys, they have to be locked in for a greater goal, and you can see the way they're celebrating. You know, it's all worth it at the end of the day. You know, it's interesting. I, I said this. I, I love when an occasional Aaron Rodgers or LeBron James is not afraid to admit, hey, I'm pretty damn good. Everybody else talks trash. Why can't LeBron James or Aaron Rodgers or somebody else? And when LeBron says, put some respect on my name, what, what did you make of that, his speech after they won? It's about damn time. <laughs> listen, I've been telling him for years. I said, listen, man. You're the best player. You're the best player ever that's played this game. You got to start talking. I know you, you're the nice guy and, you know, you don't want, you know, you want to make everyone happy, but you got you to gotta talk the talk. You walk the walk. You want to dunk on guys and block shots and all that stuff. You got to let them know. Put some respect on your name. And that made me so happy when he said that to Rachel Nichols when, when she interviewed him because it's the truth. Every time he uh, there's pressure on him, he makes something happen. And then there's another um, stat that comes out that he's not a part of and he makes it happen. So he keeps... Every time we give him a challenge, he just looks at it and, and takes it on and, and makes makes greatness out of it. So yeah. I'm glad he said about time. By the way, do the, do the players talk about the GOAT conversation, MJ and LeBron? Oh, all the time. I mean, I, I, I literally have this conversation after every game that I, the Lakers play or if we're watching the last dance. And um, it's definitely in the locker room. Um, I think a lot of guys that are playing in our, in our game right now, current players will say that LeBron's the best. Obviously, you know, the friends I have are all in their, you know, late 20s, early 30s, so we all agree. But there's always that one friend or that one guy in the locker room that will that will say Jordan. And um, it's kind of crazy that some guys will say Jordan because I think, um, you know, as athletes, we have an ego. And I feel like sometimes guys don't want to say LeBron because they might have to guard him next night and they, you know, <laughs> or he probably drop 40 on them. So <laughs> and I think it's more their ego and they're not being realistic with themselves. <laughs> well, and I also think LeBron did so. LeBron decided this year I'm going to lead the league in assists. I've always said LeBron's yeah. got a lot of Wilt in him. Wilt did that at one point in his career. He said, I'm going to lead the league in assists, and Wilt led the league in assists. Is that Wilt could yeah. have done, Wilt was a little bit of a flake. LeBron's not. Wilt and LeBron are, are really the only players in my life who could just decide, oh, we're forwards and centers. We want to be the best passer in the league. And Michael couldn't do that. Michael was the best scorer, but I don't think he would have ever been the mm -hmm. best passer. When you look at, when you look at Anthony Davis... I, I, Joy and I, from week one, we were like, God, it's just so natural. And it speaks well to both of them. I mean, because we all know Kyrie and LeBron had their, had their issues. But who do I, what do you make of the LeBron AD relationship and just how strong it feels? No, it's extremely strong and it's very natural because. It's not basketball. I think X and O's coaching, that's easy. That, that, that's, that, that's the easy thing. I think what makes this uh, relationship work is the mental aspect. I mean, LeBron is the best player in the world, and it's very rare that you see a top three caliber player like Anthony Davis come in without a top 300 ego. And I think that's why the relationship has grown so much. And also, you know, obviously having the same agent as Rich Paul, um, he, he told me when, when, when LeBron came back to Cleveland, like, you know, you guys are going to have success, but there's going to be a point in time if you guys win a championship, there's going to be guys are going to develop an ego and there's going to be a wedge that, that forms on our team. And and with L.A., he said, you know, it's that that's not going to happen because the way A.D., his mindset and, and, and his circle and his people, obviously we all have the same agents, so we all have this more family bond relationship where we all just want the best thing. And it's almost like if you look at when they're celebrating, it's like 80s, like, you know what? This is for my big brother. I want to help be part of his legacy and not so much, hey, I want to be the man and this is going to be my show. Because at the end of the day, when you play with LeBron, no matter if you score 60 one night or you score 100 points, you know, the headlines are going to be about LeBron. And if you can understand and say, you know what? How can I be the best asset for LeBron? And that will obviously 
help yourself and help me too. Help me get that big contract and me being a role player. So imagine all-star. You'll get everything you want if you just buy into that process and understand. Let LeBron be LeBron and you could be a great player in your own lane. It'll be interesting. Uh, I mean, Rondo, I thought, proved me wrong. I thought he was kind of washed, and I thought he was unbelievable against Denver in spots. I thought he was unbelievable in that game Sunday. So I'm wrong on that. You know, I, That's Rondo. TV lights are on. Rondo's great. I thought the defense, these guys played so well. You know, so when you yeah. look at next year, Avery Bradley can come back. They are a pretty old team. I do think KCP... I'm in on KCP. I thought he played with guts. Me He's too. Not, not afraid of any big shots. So I'm in on KCP. Kuzma eh, drives me nuts. He loses confidence too much. Do you think they need, because everybody's going to be better next year. Dallas, Luka's going to be a year older. Clippers come back, chip on their shoulder. What little piece could they get in free agency, in your opinion, Tristan? I think, uh, Colin, you know with this with basketball right now is the uncertainty. I think the, the salary cap is definitely going to play a big part of that. But in terms of constructing your team, if, if I'm Rob Palinka and, and I'm the front office, I'm looking at, okay, we, we won this year, so every team is going to look at our roster and try to pick us apart. So for us, they got to look at a, who they think could be give them the toughest challenge next year. And obviously, I've been saying this for a long time. I still think those guys in the Bay Area – are going to be coming ready to go. Obviously, you know, they got the number two pick, which is kind of similar to what happened in San Antonio that year when David Robinson was out. You go ahead and get Tim Duncan, and you come out with a bang. So I think the Lakers got to look at, you know, that Golden State Warrior team and, and say, okay, how can we form a team that can guard them, but also we got to be able to make shots. And if we look in the playoffs, you need guys that can guard multiple positions. Yeah. If you're a five man, you got to be able to guard a small forward. If you are a small forward, you got to be able to switch on to a big and be able to contain him or, or get a, get a t cut, tough contest. So I think if, if I'm the Lakers, we got to continue improving our shooting, but have guys that can guard multiple positions because that's why they started Markeith Morris in a couple of those games because you got to switch it up. You need guys to guard multiple positions. And obviously, you know, Dwight and JaVale, it was tough for them. Yeah, no, it's a really good point. Well, Tristan, um, may not talk to you for a while because the NBA season's done. We love having you as part of Fox. I love it when you come on. My friends are always like, oh, Tristan's got all this. Now, my wife always wants to know about your personal life, but I say, honey, that we can't talk about his personal <laughs> life on the air. That's not the way the game works. But I Everything's love great. Everything's great at home. <laughs> all right. That's all I want to hear, buddy. Uh, continued, yeah. continued success. Love having you as a teammate. Thanks, man. No, appreciate it. Thank you for having me on. I love being on. Thank you. All right, Tristan. Now, his point is, it, it was hard to bring a Dwight Howard or JaVale McGee in the finals. You need somebody that can defend multiple positions. And remember, Golden State's back next year. So you're going to have Steph, you're going to have Clay, you're going to have Draymond. They'll probably have the number one or they have the one or two pick. What's what Golden State? They have the number two pick. So the Golden State. And then you're going to have Dallas getting better. First of all, Denver is going to come back Next year, uh, now they've gone deeper in the playoffs, so Denver's going to come back. And by the way, Denver's going to have home court advantage next year with no bubble. Altitude has always been, a, whenever Denver's good, we forget about this. Big advantage, playing it. Denver's good teams are always really good at home. Utah's going to get healthy. They got banged up. Remember Bogdanovich hurt his wrist? That's just the West. The Clippers are going to come with the a Clippers. pitch. So it's, it's the Kevin Durant.